Hello insiders, news flash time. First item, we have pretty much migrated about 99.9% .9 of all creators from YouTube Studio Legacy Classic to the new YouTube Studio. Most of you, uh, this has not changed much since most creators thankfully have been using the new YouTube Studio almost exclusively. There are still a couple of features that are linked to from YouTube Studio to the old classic system, but those will be going away uh, in time as well very soon. I should take this moment to thank everybody who over the years have given us a ton of feedback about how we can improve YouTube Studio, particularly when it was still a beta. I know there were definitely a lot of rough edges. Hopefully you'll agree that it has come a long way and you're just as excited as I am about where we're gonna take it going uh, forward. In fact, uh, bulk uploads for the new upload flow is coming to all channels this week. This was a top requested feature for the new upload experience and uh, you'll be getting a deep dive into that coming very soon. Next, uh, speaking of this migration from Classic to YouTube Studio, that's also going to apply to the small percentage of creators that use YouTube Studio through their mobile web browser. So this is not the people who use YouTube Studio through their laptop or desktop. It's also not people who use our fantastic uh, native mobile apps, but these are the people that use our mobile browser and then try and access YouTube Studio. When you do that, you're now gonna be redirected to the new YouTube Studio, not the classic legacy studio since that is being deprecated. Next, an update on YouTube Analytics. Uh, as you may have noticed, YouTube Analytics may not have shown you the complete estimated revenue for a claimed video if your dispute was initiated and then later resolved in two different months. So it was a bit of a, a bug or a product limitation. We are excited to let you know about an update to YouTube Analytics that will add more transparency to your estimated revenue earned per video for released claims. So in the future, if you have a content ID claim that is released in your favor, you'll be able to see that video's revenue data in YouTube Analytics for the time that the video was in dispute. There's no action required from you. There won't be any change in the dispute process. This is simply an update to how revenue appears in YouTube Analytics. Now, speaking of YouTube Analytics, I was actually just in a conversation with some folks from the YouTube Analytics team, and I was saying to them, hey, when you log into YouTube Studio, uh, on the right-hand side, you have that channel analytics card and it always shows you versus your last 28 months. Unfortunately, if you had a really amazing previous month, you'll often get all these like down red arrows and it's kind of demotivating. And so some people were saying, oh, well, that's just being scientifically accurate. I am of the mind that of course we should show the numbers as they are, but you don't need to kind of like lay into it. Just make it gray or something. And then other people are saying, oh, well, that should be a setting and people can have it red or gray. Uh, so I was kind of curious what you guys, where you guys land on that one. It, it'll help settle a, settle a bet within the team. Next, I have a community guidelines update. Specifically, if you make a reaction video to a very dangerous challenge, the video can be age restricted or removed for a reaction video to a challenge that doesn't have commentary discouraging the challenge. Uh, we may allow videos that depict dangerous acts if it's really meant to be educational, documentary, scientific, or let's say artistic. For example, a news piece on the dangers of choking games would be appropriate, but posting clips out of context from that same documentary might not be. So when it comes to reaction videos to dangerous challenges, please be very careful, be aware. It could be age restricted or removed. What's most important is that you provide context. Next, following up on the redesigned YouTube homepage for desktop and tablets, we're starting to roll out a new design for the video watch page on mobile. This update will be available to everyone using YouTube mobile app on Android and iOS in the next few weeks. So what's in this update? 
you're going to see a new uh, preview of the comment section directly below the video player above your list of videos to watch next. You can either post a new comment or see a comment preview. You can simply tap anywhere to view all, like, reply to more comments. We hope this makes it easier for you to connect with others and discuss the video you're watching. In our early experiments, we found that more people are writing comments with the new design, so that should be a win. Now, since there's limited space in comment previews, pinning a comment does not automatically guarantee it will appear in the new comment section as a comment preview. However, when a viewer does tap to expand the comment section and view all comments, pinned comments will continue to always show as the first comment. Other changes to this design include videos in the watch next recommendations will have larger thumbnails, channel avatars, longer titles, and these features will give creators more space to tell viewers what the video is all about. But wait, there's more. You'll now see community posts in the watch feed. And with community posts, viewers will be able to view text, image, video posts related to the video being watched. Viewers can now respond by commenting, liking, and voting on polls for posts directly from the watch next feed. In addition to posts, there's also gonna be these things called mixes. They're basically YouTube creator playlists that have been expanded to include content specifically from the creator that the viewer is watching in the player. Next, we are running a small experiment in the US that shows some viewers of specific videos which products are discussed in those videos. For example, on a video about smartphones, you might see a list of phones being discussed. We're testing to see how viewers engage with these new features. The test will be running for a limited time. Next, to support learners during the COVID-19 crisis, we have continued our rolling expansion of youtube.com slash learning to additional markets and languages. The Learning Hub is currently adapted to the following markets, Australia, India, Japan, Korea, Latin America, US, Spain, France, Ger Great Britain, Ireland, Italy. Um, however, this can be accessed from all markets where YouTube is launched. And lastly, our tr what a long news flash, huh, folks? Whoo! Okay, lastly, <laughs> our trivia. Last week, I asked you, hey, we added this new sparkling effect. When does that happen? And as many of you had guessed correctly, you get the little animated sparkle in the YouTube Studio dashboard on the snapshot card when you have a new number one video out of your last 10 videos normalized for the time since upload. Let us know in the comments if you've noticed that little sparkle treatment. Now for this week's trivia, there was a very, very large change to the Creator Studio mobile app uh, in the last few weeks for Android. So if you're an Android Creator Studio mobile app user, there was a change, and I think a lot of people have been asking about this or for this for many, many, at least quarters, maybe years. What was that change? Uh, first person to guess correctly, put it in the comments below, and we will give you a shout out at the next newsflash. In the meantime, keep it real.